Hasidi and whoever else happens to be tuning in at this time, we're going to introduce a new kind of segment to you. This is going to be Ask a Pastor or Ask an Elder. One of us will answer it. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a short amount of time, short being relative, of course, depending on who's answering it, to ask some or to answer some questions that you guys have during this time. And the first one that I'm going to answer actually comes from a five-year-old in our congregation named Elizabeth. And Elizabeth called me last week and she asked me, Pastor Matt, why does God make COVID-19? Basically, why does God allow things like this to happen? What a great question, not only from a five-year-old, but maybe something that some of us who have been walking in the faith for five, 10, or 50 years still struggle with to get our minds around. So let's think through it, and I'll try to answer it on a five to 10-year-old level first. And then at the very end, I'll try to give some thoughts for parents as we walk our kids through these big questions about God and how we think about that. So to start off with, why did God make COVID-19 or why is this happening? Um, well, in one sense, we could give a very, very short answer. And the reason is sin. But let's go back to the very beginning. We know that God made everything. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that means the stars and the galaxies way, way out there that we can't even understand how big they are, all the way down to the teeny tiny microscopic things like viruses and bacteria that we can't even see with our eyes. And when God made everything, what did he say? He said it was good. And at the end of Genesis 1, he says it is very good. In the beginning, God made everything good. Everything worked together for the glory of God and did exactly what it was designed to do. But it didn't stay that way. We know in Genesis 3 that Adam and Eve were told not to eat from the tree in the garden, but they did. And when Adam and Eve went against what God said, they sinned. And sin has consequences. Sin separated them from God. It meant that they couldn't be with God anymore. But sin didn't only impact their relationship with God. Sin touched all of creation, the plants, the animals, those things that we can see and those things that we can't see. All of it was touched and affected by sin. Now the world that we live in is broken. It's done in a way that God didn't design at first. Things don't work like they were supposed to. Because sin separates and sin kills. And so we understand that why do bad things happen? The short answer is sin. But even in the middle of all of this, we know that the same God that created is still in control of all of these things. God didn't go to sleep. God didn't forget about the creation that he has made. Even this, as hard as it is, is a part of his plan. And if we look, we can see some good things that God is doing. God is helping us understand how to reach out to our neighbors when it's hard to talk to them. God is helping churches understand how to connect with people when they can't come physically to church. God is putting us in our families for a long period of time so that we can be reminded of what's really important and how we work together as families. But it goes beyond that because not only is God working right now, but God has a plan for the future. And that is that someday the king is going to come back again. And when Jesus comes again, he is going to deal with sin. He's going to judge sin and he's going to remove it. He's going to take it all away. The thing that broke creation, the thing that brings sickness and pain and death, he's going to remove and he's going to remake this creation and it's going to be good, very good. It's going to all work together the way it's supposed to. And we're going to be able to be with him forever in a place with no sin and no death and no sickness, and nothing scary. In other words, it's all going to be even better than it was in the garden so long ago. So when we look at this, we understand that God made everything, that sin breaks creation, but that God has a plan to put everything back together again. And so now parents, guardians, grandparents, friends, we'll talk to you. How do we answer those big questions that come from little hearts? Well, there's a couple of things we don't need to do. First of all, we don't need to pretend that we know all of the whys. We don't know why this specific virus at this specific time. But we also need to understand that we don't need to make excuses for God or try to get him off the hook. God knows, and he's always known. God plans, and he's always planned. All of this still falls under his perfect, sovereign control. So how do we answer? We go back to what we know. We go back to those things that sometimes seem so basic that we seem to have left them behind when we were five and six-year-olds. We know that God created, and we know that God made everything good. We know that sin is real, and we know and we can explain to our kids that sin has serious consequences, not just in eternity, but even right now, we see what sin does between people, between creation elements itself. And we know that God is working. 
In the here and now, God is working. God is using this to bring him glory, to make him look good, and to make his people more like him. And maybe even more importantly than that, we can point our kids to the future. We can talk about eternity. We can talk about the return of Christ, the hope that there is in knowing him, in a hope that there's that lies wrapped up in a time when sin and death are done away with, and when we can stand before him face to face and worship him through all eternity, singing holy, 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 without sin as a barrier between us. And so we can point them to those things that we absolutely know about a God who has revealed himself to us so that we can understand and worship him better. We hope this helps you. And if you have another question, we'd love to answer it. Send it our way and we'll address it in a future version of this question and answer time. God bless you. Have a great week.